Good evening. Oh, well, good day. So, welcome back to my channel. And we've got a, one of my friend's laptops. Let's call him Smikey's laptop. And uh, we had a little bit of an accident on it. And it's got liquid damage. So, it doesn't turn on. So... Let's take it apart and see if we can fix it. This is a Lenovo Let's undo the battery quickly. It's Lenovo G five hundred. I think this is a beer spill and we've got a broken hinge screw we've got a missing screw and another missing screw That off to the side. Let's open it. So it was the liquid damage that held everything, stuck everything together. Can see even here there's some liquid damage. So let's get the hard drive out. I'll drive out. I'm just checking to see if there's any liquid damage in our drive. It looks nice and clean. So put this in a safe place. This is a little box over there. I'll just dump it in there. Remove the DVD writer. Need to remove the fan if I remember correctly on these models because they hold in the the top case. Let's turn this over here. Uh, one over here. There's another keyboard screw over here. Alright, that should be all the bottom screws. Let's check to give it a once over. See if I can find anything. Nope, that looks good. The inch is definitely broken in this corner and this side here as well. Keyboard is stuck in quite good. Let me 
it's because of the liquid damage. So if we just want to break apart, there we go. As you can see, it's definitely liquid spill on here. Keyboard could cause the laptop not to start up, but uh, before I apply power to this, I first want to see if there's anything if there's anything. Any liquid damage on the board. So let's get that out. I see a lot of dust. It's one of the hinge inserts that's broken. Yeah, it's a little screw, they don't want to come out around that side. We do have some. Yeah, some liquid damage on this spot over here. Otherwise, the board looks quite nice. It's, uh, remove the board out of the housing. We would need to check the bottom side as well. Just dump those screws over there. Let's get it focused back to the bottom. Mm. Just one over there. Must probably miss the Wi Fi cord as well. Let's check the Wi Fi cord in the bottom. Yep. No, wi Fi cord is not holding it in. I'm just removing the Wi Fi cord. Pull on the and pull on the wires, pull on the connector. Yeah, it's out. Unplug that. Unplug the DC inboard. Take out the RAM as well. Now reposition the camera, we can go have a look over the board, see if we can see any damage. Let's unplug the CMOS battery as well. So the board is completely dead, no power. Right, let me get this uh, laptop out of the way and let's get back. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite dirty here and it looks like we've got some liquid damage over here. The board actually doesn't look that bad. Let's just pan around the board. Remember to take off these stickers and check under them for any liquid as well. You'll be surprised how much times I actually um, found liquid under the stickers. Nothing on the top, just under the stickers. Uh, let's check the back side of the board. Okay, this looks actually nice and clean. So it doesn't look too bad. We're going to clean this side here up in a moment. All right. So let's have a look at the coils. So what do we have? 
the power cans in here you got your first two MOSFETs so this will be the charging for the battery this capacitor is rated for 25 volts so this will be one of the main rail we've got CPU, 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 uh, CPU so these we all CPU based uh, coils then we have two next to each other so one should be 3.3 .3, one should be 5 and this one just check something quickly this one could this must probably pch power which is a 105 volt rail and this one is most probably the ram power rail for ram all right so let's um get some IPA, I just put it in this little spray bottle. Let's just spray that board down over there. So, I just want to get the worst. Staining off here, all the dust. Just take some paper towel, put it over the top. Just clean the board nicely. That looks much, much, much better. So, let's see if we have any shorts. Let's get the meter in here. So I'm doing this on tired mode. I know most of people like to use resistor mode. I just feel tired mode is just quicker for me. It's like a go no go on off switch basically. All right, let's put that over there. We put the red probe on the ground. We check that first coil, 0.5, that's a good value. Let's move up to the CPU. CPU will always have low. I'll remeasure this with Ohm's value. They will all be low as per normal. They're always low. We'll just recheck that with the uh, um, I'm reading that's 0 0.5 that's fine that's 0 0.3 it's fine let's check this one here in the bottom that should also be quite a low reading we can also check on the pin number 8 of the bias chip there's no short over there and we can also check The RAM one over here. That looks good. Let's go back to the CPU. Bring in multimeter and ohms. Let's just check the CPU. 2.7. Point eight, one point eight, eleven. And this one in the bottom that also showed low. Ten ohms. That's around about right. 
So let's check the main voltage rail. You see this capacitor is 25 on there. That should also be a main rail voltage. And we need to put the red probe on ground. Now we have 0.5. So we've got no shorts on this board, which looks quite good. We do have another little voltage rail over here. That looks good. So everything looks good. There's no shorts on this board. Which really means that this board should power up. So, let's get a power supply. Let's set it to 19 volts. Ground on ground. Let's just check this. Make very sure we're not connecting to a wrong MOSFET. This is the first, that's the second MOSFET. Let's apply 19 volts there. Not pulling any current. Okay. Let's get the multimeter back in here. Go to voltage. Uh, this is going to be tricky. Let's put it upside down. All right, let's insert power. We have five. Okay, so you do have 5 volts, so you should have the main voltage roll at 19, or 18.6. Okay, so this looks good. You can't see any fault with the power supply, with the board so far. Let's, um... See if we can get this started up. So what we need is, now what I normally do, which is the easiest way, is to get the power button off from the top case. One, two. So all I'm doing is I'm just making sure that we have no um, problems on the board and we can continue fixing it. Okay, what we need to get is we need to get a way to inject some voltage on this board. So I'm going to hold the board. I've got no RAM in here, remember. Let's press the power button. Okay. And we have fan spin. So this board looks to be fine. We have no problems on the board. All I'm going to do is clean this area a bit more up. And we can put we can put this board back into the case. Let's do let's say clean this.
En die hebben we ook dus van die kleine. But I presume the fault on this is actually the keyboard and nothing more. Okay, that looks better. Some IPA. So this is his normal liquid uh, lighter fluid. Any reason why I open this, um, I want to make sure that there is no liquid damage on the board. I'm just clean my bench off as well. All right, let's dump that away. Let's um, get you guys higher up. Uh, plug in that so I should have the universal charger over here I do and I should also have a plug that would fit this one I do so we can test Let's see if we have display on this laptop. He's set to 19. Put that away. Right. Let's get this board back in. Let's get the CMOS battery plugged in back. Let's get the power jack plugged in. Get the uh, uh, LCD plug back in. Let's put the RAM back. One. It's got two RAM strips of two four gigs. This is the i5. Get all these cables out of the way. I'm just plugging cables back in. I hate these type of connectors. If I only push in, if you do them too much in and out, they will break. They will start bending over the pins in the back. Let's put the LED back. Okay, that should be it. Let's get the uh, universal power supply in here. We have a power light. Let's push the power button. Off, should go off, should go on again.
Donald Beach, das Atlanta, Georgia, it's uh, remove one RAM strip, put it down there. There you go. You just power it on. So is this a faulty RAM strip or some liquid damage on the RAM strip? Don't see anything. The laptop will switch on, switch off, switch on. It's trying to looking for a boot device. Let's unplug it again. It's uh Plug in this RAM strip again. Nope, it's not powering up. Okay, let's um, let's check at the uh, one that which powered up. Put that one side. Let's put the one that doesn't want to power up in. So I'm just seeing which one. Okay, it's happy with that drum strip as well. Let's add the second one. This could be a faulty RAM slot. There we go. Okay. So that looks happy. So another thing I like to do before I continue with these laptops is find my screwdriver first and tighten up the hinges. That looks good. That looks good. So now nice and tight again. What we also can do is just clean up these hinges a bit. Put a drop of oil on the hinges. I've got this one very small open, so I don't apply too much oil. It runs the laptop full. So the oil would help the hinges to free up a bit. And we need to fix those two. Brass inserts on the top, so we need to remove the screw. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Get the top cover back in. Let's put the power button back in. There we go. Put its two little screws back. One, two, let's uh, swap it over, let's put 
you guys and guys a bit out, a bit closer. There we go. So I'm just gonna sketch up this plastic a bit. Insert back. Let's see if we can find my stash of Q bond. And let me get some glue. So I've got the super glue. Apply some of the cube bond here in the bottom. So any filling up. The plastic. The drop extend it this way. You didn't even use the microscope on this one. Let's shake this up a bit. Supply drop so long. I just want to open this hole slightly more. Let's go this way. Let's go that way. That's glued in. All right, let's see the other side. Three more goes much quicker, but. It is 12 o'clock at night, so then my kid is sleeping, so no dream of food today. Get some ASMR sounds here of plastics getting scratched away. These are not too bad. It's normally when they metalized that uh, you need to clean them properly. When they are um, 
just plastic these this glue should bond to it okay, this one should be a little bit stubborn so here's my trick for stubborn ones apply a drop of super, super glue on there and you stick it back into the hole So it's a few seconds there. That should hold it in place while we can apply the glue. Just put a drop of super glue on there. Just wait for that smoke to disappear. Of course that burns. Alright. Swap it this way. Oops. Let's pull this up. You can see I'm filling the bottom up. There's nothing to go against, so We're up against the metal, the brass insert. Right, we pull that down. I'll put this away so long, and then we can come back and assemble it. Okay, so I got you guys zoomed out. Let's get the laptop back in. Me and that screwdriver. There we go. Let's get this back together. So, why do you guys think this didn't, didn't power up? So, my theory would be is that the keyboard is causing it not to start up. So if you have liquid damage on a keyboard, it could cause the to short out the EC and pull the EC down to ground, and or some of the pins down, and the EC would not start up or super IO. That's that little chip over here. These connections are the one I, I had. You can damage them so easily. There we go. Let's get slipped in.
that. Let's go back in. There was no screws on the top. I guess it supports this hinge while we push down the casing. So I presume it's smiky because you need a new keyboard. I'm just going to put the hinge screws back first. Don't over tighten because they will snap off. So I'm putting the hinge screws back in. You guys remember we had the screw missing. So this will just keep the hinge nice and stable. There was a screw missing, there was a screw. I'm doing this off by head. I do not remember where all the screws go. Because the more you do it, the more you get used to know which screw goes where. can do is you can try plugging in that um, keyboard again it's a 2.5 by 3 miles it should be short as screws see what we've got here yeah we've got a couple of thin screws that's how the keyboard runs there should be three more ones Two for the fan, one, two, so there's one here, we should have three big ones left, but I think we're not going to have three big ones left because of the missing screws we have. Let's put the optical drive in the back. Yeah. That's a three more screw as well. 2.5 by 3. 3 I'm referring to length. The length of the screw So I'll draw a click. That was a 2.5 by 3 more. That's four of them. So the screws we got left is three thin ones. And one, two, That's two millimeters by five millimeters. Is that we had two screws missing, so we only got one for the bottom over there. I do have a bunch of these screws, but not yet. It's the shop, so it's just going back tomorrow anyway, so we can put some more screws in there. the tweezer. There we go. All right. 
not going to plug the keyboard back yet. Let's put the battery. Oh, that's much better. Let's replug the power supply. Switch it on. We have display. We have window starting up. I'm just going to do this out of view. See if there's a photo of Smikey on here. His name is Mike, but we call him Smikey. Or AKA. We call him Batman. <laughs> we got no keyboard. So let's turn this off quickly again. We have a charging light. Trackpad is working. So that all turns off. It's Windows. Oh, it takes a while before it turns off. Off now. Let's plug in the keyboard. Let's see if the keyboard is the faulty one. Now, the keyboard plugged in. Oh, actually, switches on. Not sure if the keyboard's going to work. Go back into Windows. No. So, as you can see, the keyboard is faulty. So, we're not going to plug in the key. So, I put the keyboard back, the keyboard is faulty. I didn't plug it in. Um, so uh, Mike would get, need to get a new keyboard. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, thanks for the subs. Thanks for watching this video. And cheers.